Here is a really easy way to um, prime your 3D printed minis or regular minifigures. Uh, first, get some minis that you want. Second, I get the top to a cardboard box and I cut it off with the um, razor blade or a box cutter. This is probably a box, one of the numerous Amazon boxes we get in this house. Then you get some blue poster tack. Any brand will do, it doesn't really matter. This is, you can reuse it over and over and over if you've noticed. Uh, one thing we do to get the tack sticky, what you like, a, a good little practice is, stretch it out. See how this is going from like dark blue to white? It's kind of activating it, heating it up. So it's, it's it makes it a little bit stickier, especially if it's older and it's good to go then. Uh, right this way, you get a small piece, get your mini. These are minis that we've 3D printed on our, um, on our frozen Sonic 4K and then glued onto bases that were printed um, on FDM material on our Ender uh, 3 version 2. So, um, ah, drop them, mixed media. They're on there pretty sturdy. We use Gorilla Glue uh, gel or any gel super glue will do. But the trick is just put a little, little, little piece like that on the back, on the back half, and then just push them down. But you want to push them down when you put them on the um, cardboard. Push them gently because if they're glued on here, if you put it in the middle and you push down, it's gonna like it's gonna stress the middle of the um, push. Putting the sticky stuff in the middle of the, of the base is gonna stress it and make it sp split, maybe crack off the feet. That way, you just put it on the back. You don't need it to be super stuck on there. I mean, it's not gonna be in a hurricane, but like that. See, this is even sticking out a little bit of the back. That's totally okay. Um, and you know, let's get her activated blue tack and i'll have links to the blue tack and all the stuff and the paint that i'm using in the in the description of this same thing towards the back push down on the back right here but not don't put on the middle like not too much pressure if you hear it crack and i have before it's not the end of the world um you can still you know it's just you want to do the best you can not to have these things see all of it's towards the back um of the base well, i'll show you right there that piece is probably a little bit too big you don't need a ton because you're not doing anything crazy with this with these guys um and you do this right there about that much is good same thing push it and i'm putting pressure with this finger i'm just like this thumb is just kind of even keeping it level and i'm really putting pressure on that back finger and just kind of giving it a little twist all right these gaze are stuck on they can be turned upside down they're ready for the next step all right, your next step is you're gonna get uh, your cans of primer. You can get gray primer, use Krylon or Rust-Oleum. Just, you know, indoor, outdoor gray primer, matte finish is what you want, so they're not shiny. Uh, it's about two to five dollars at a hardware store, Walmart, depending on where you shop, where you live. Also available on Amazon. Uh, you can buy them in bulk on Amazon, which gets kind of cheap. Same thing, if you wanna do a Zenithal top, which I'll show in the next step, get some white to uh, white matte white primer, um, same thing. This is the Fusion all-in-one print primer. As long as it's matte and, and you test, I would test it on a mini when you get it or, re, or check online and read up, but like the Krylon and the Rust-Oleum works fine on resin printed minis. Uh, so the next step is, after we have those, and I'll have links to those in the description, you wanna get some nitrile gloves. You can use latex for this step because you're not, you're supposed to use nitrile for resin because resin eats up latex, but you can use latex gloves in a pinch to do spray painting. You just wanna, you just, we're gonna spray paint these things outside and you don't wanna have to, um, you know, deal with getting spray paint on your hands and then trying to get off a of soap or acetone or whatever, or have gray, white, black, purple, green hands, whatever you're spray painting for the rest of, you know, next two to three days. So now let's get our stuff, we'll get this, we'll get our paint and we'll go outside and we'll, we'll spray paint these things. All right, next step, uh, we've got our guys, we're on our side yard here, nothing fancy. Um, I just put on top of our trash can, hold them for a second. Jump them here so you can see them. And I'm gonna get our gray primer. I like to use gray primer pretty much across the board, unless I'm doing something like big, like that. Like uh, I made a Mando blaster for my son for Halloween that was like as big as this cardboard. I used black primer because it was mostly black underneath. It didn't matter. Uh, but yeah, I usually just use gray. Like I said, Krylon, Rust-Oleum, whatever. Gray primer, matte is the most important. I'm gonna shake it off camera. I shook it before I started, but you wanna shake it for a good 30 seconds. So the can's brand new. Shake it for a minute. Give it a good shake. Get it going. Um, and then here's all I do. So we can do this. You want to do it on a day that's like you know nice outside and not too windy. You just come this way, right across, about this about eight inches away. I start the spraying be right before, and then I come across, come across. Watch. Oh man, this camera. Oh, here we go. Like that. Not too much. I'm more worried about the figure than the base, to be honest. Same thing. Turn it this way. Back and forth. You can hit on top. Um, you can do one this way. One that way if you're feeling really froggy. And then the base in the front, if you're, if you're really nitpicky, boom. That's it, let this sit for about, I don't know, two or three minutes if it's a nice sunny day, if it's a, if it's a cloudy day, 10 or 20 minutes. And then when that's, when that's nice and hard, 
or not not hard but dry not shiny anymore you can tell you're gonna get your white spray paint and we'll do a zenithal layer we'll let this sit and we'll do zenithal next all right we're back and we've let these guys dry for a minute or not a minute like eh, about five minutes they're not shiny anymore so they're pretty much pretty much dry to the touch we got a new can of white that i've been shaking off camera for the past minute or two um and then we're just gonna do this zenithal is just getting like a darker a lighter color than you have like if you're using gray or black and just going across the top just once to hit them with the white coming down to get to show the highlights and the details on the clothing it's very easy to do watch it's just this that's it that's zenithal that guy got a lot that guy didn't get too much you can do one more pass but yeah that's about that's Super heavy Zenithal, that's light Zenithal, but light is the best. Like on the cat, you can see all these cool details and stuff. That will help you paint for picking a paint palette and what parts to, to cover. Um, yeah, it makes it a lot easier. So these, I wouldn't leave these outside unless you look somewhere sunny and warm, but if it's windy and it blow over or a dog or cat or animal could get to these, mess with them, break them, eat them and die. Uh, so I would put these inside in a, in a cool, this is gonna be super warm, cool dry place for 12 hours. I like to let them sit overnight. Then when they're done in the morning, I take this, this is a nice and dry, and I just gently peel these guys off, gently peel the blue ball, the blue balls of sticky stuff on, and then save that for next time. And then they're good to go. I put them on a, put them on a painting, um, you know, holder. And these guys are ready to paint with acrylic paint, any type you want. Hope this video has been helpful. If it has, um, awesome. If it hasn't, well, God, I feel really disappointed in myself. <laughs>